So how do we measure delta H? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to deviate from the chemistry and start talking about physics and specifically the physics of heat. Um, I've put a little Q next to the title here because when we're talking about the amount of heat, we will often use the symbol Q, which instantaneously should rankle you because that not only is there no Q in heat, but there's also no Q in the Latin for heat. Well, the origins of this symbol Q, supposedly very archaic, come from the days when people thought that heat was a form of matter. And so Q just refers to the quantity of heat. Very simplistic explanation. Anyway, when we're talking about macroscopic heat, we need to decide whether we're talking about a substance or an object. So a substance, of course, could be pure, could be a nice homogeneous mixture, but it's a substance for which we can measure the mass of one gram and say that that's going to have the same composition as if we measured 10 grams of it. So a substance. When we talk about the heat of a substance, we're referring to the so-called specific heat capacity. There's quite a few heat specific heat capacities. We're talking about the one that C for capacity, little p for constant pressure. OK, there's also a CV for constant volume. But in this particular movie series, we're not going to worry about that. So anyway, the specific heat or specific heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of our substance by one degree Celsius. You'll also sometimes see the um, molar specific heat capacity. Well, that's obviously the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one mole of the substance by one degree Celsius. We're not going to worry so much about molar specific heats in this particular movie series, but you should be aware of both of them. Anyway, the formula for calculating heat, therefore, is quite simply the mass of the substance that you have, because you need to know how many one grams there are in there, times the change in temperature, because you need to know how many one degree Celsius is there are in what you're studying, times the specific heat capacity, which tells you the heat for one gram for one degree Celsius. Quick example, if it takes 28 joules to raise the specific the temperature of eight grams of an alloy by five degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat of the alloy. Pop everything in, 28 joules is the mass, eight grams, times the temperature change, five degrees Celsius, times the specific heat capacity, CP. Multiply it through, and you find that CP is 0.7 joules per gram degree Celsius. So joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, energy needed per gram per degree Celsius. Now that's when we're talking about a substance and an awful lot of the time we will be talking about that substance being water and the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. There will also however be times in which we're talking about not a substance but an object. Okay, so for example, later on, we're going to talk about the specific or the, the amount of heat associated with a coffee cup. That's an object. It's not a substance. It's an object. And so when we're talking about an object, we don't talk about the specific heat capacity. We just talk about the heat capacity. And I'm going to use the abbreviation HC for that. Now, the heat capacity it looks very much like the specific heat capacity, except lacking one very important component. The heat capacity of an object is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of that object by one degree Celsius. Nothing to do with per gram. It's just I've got my object. How much heat do I need to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius? So the expression quite easy. Change in temperature, in other words, how many of these one degree Celsius's we have, times that heat capacity. Quick example, oh look, a coffee cup. An insulated coffee cup has a heat capacity of 12 joules per degree Celsius. Again, note there's no gram there because we're just looking at the whole object. Calculate the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of the coffee cup by 14 degrees Celsius. Q is 14, the amount of heat we need, times the heat capacity 12. Pop it in and Q is 168 joules. OK, very, very important that you appreciate substance. We're talking about the specific heat capacity object, the thing we have, the heat capacity. Now, we talked about then the general ideas of heat. Now, let's talk about calorimetry, which is calorie heat metry measurement. How do we measure heat? 
Well, we're going to apply very loosely the so-called first law of thermodynamics, the law of conservation of energy. And we're going to assume that all the energy we're talking about here is heat, and the only kind of energy transfer that's going on is heat transfer. That's why I say we're going to apply it rather loosely. So if we've got two components, one of them's losing heat, one of them's gaining heat, the amount of heat lost by one is the amount of heat gained by the other. Now we define our two components, and this is something that often confuses students into a system and a surroundings. Now ultimately, our system is going to be our reaction. It's going to be that microscopic level of things, and the surroundings is going to be what's surrounding the reaction, what medium is the reaction taking place in. But there are also macroscopic things that we can look at, and we'll look at a couple of examples of those. But the important thing to remember is that we talk about one component that's effectively got one direction of heat change, it's gaining or it's losing heat, and then we talk about everything else that is doing the opposite. So if the system, the one thing is gaining, the surroundings are losing. If the system is losing, all that heat is going to the surroundings, which are therefore gaining. So a lump of metal 95 degrees Celsius is dropped into water at 25 degrees Celsius. So let's think about what's happening here. We got the hot metal, we've got the cold water. We've got one thing, metal, another thing, water. Metal is our system, water is the surroundings. When we put the hot metal into the cold water, the metal is going to lose heat and where's that heat going? It's going into the surroundings, the water, which are going to gain heat. Okay? So anyway, let's look at the metal. The metal is a substance. So the heat change of a metal is the mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat capacity. Well, the mass of the metal is 15 grams. Its change in temperature, well, it starts at 35, and the final temperature of everything is 32. So it starts at 95, final temperature is 32. So the change in temperature is what you had at the end, 32, minus what you had at the start, 95. And then we don't know what the specific heat of the metal is, but that's the whole point of the question. Calculate the specific heat of the metal. So here's our heat of the metal is minus 945. It's minus because it's lost heat times the specific heat of the metal. Now let's think about the water. Water again is a substance. So we need its mass, its change in temperature, and its specific heat capacity. There's the mass, there's the specific heat capacity. Change in temperature at the end, 32, minus at the start, 25. So the heat change of the water is plus 761 joules because the water has gained that heat. So now applying our little idea, Q of the system, the metal, equals minus Q of the surroundings, the water. Pop in our numbers, minus 945 times the specific heat of the metal equals minus 761. See how those minuses now cancel out one lost energy, the metal, one gained energy, and so the specific heat of the metal, 0.805 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Piece of cake, right? Let's add a couple of complicating issues into this, shall we? 50 grams of hot water at 90 is added to 25 grams of water at 22. So that's easy, right? Hot water is one component. Cold water is another component. The hot water is going to cool down. The cold water is going to warm up. But that cold water is contained in an insulated cup, right? So as we add the hot water, it's not just going to warm up the cold water, but it's also going to warm up the cup. So that means that before we even start things, let's say the hot water, which is the thing that's going to cool down, is the system, and the surroundings, the things that are going to warm up, are both the water and the cup. And we want to get the final temperature, so we'll just call that Tf. So let's look at the Q for all our bits, shall we? The hot water is a substance. So Q of the hot water, mass times change in temperature, times the specific heat, 50 times Tf minus 19, times the specific heat. Okay, be sure you see where that is. Important thing there is there's the change in temperature, what we have at the end, Tf minus what we had at the start, 90. So I said the surroundings, it's going to be warmed up as the cold water cools down, is both the water and the cup. So the water is a substance, so mass times change in temperature times Cp, mass 25, 
CP 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius for water and then the change in temperature again what you have at the end TF minus what you had at the start 22 for the cup the cup is an object so it has a heat capacity 75 joules per degree Celsius so the heat capacity 75 change in temperature again at the end TF at the start it was 22 so apply our system and surroundings Q of the hot water is minus the whole bracketed Q of the surroundings that's the cold water plus the cup so expand this out and it's 209.2 TF minus 90 degrees C okay this one here minus sign in the front cold water turns out to be 104.6 into TF minus 22 and then for the cup is just 75 times TF minus 22 now let's expand all that out okay so the expansion here fairly straightforward 209.2 times TF minus 209.2 times 90 okay now this over here long expansion and you should check to see that I get in all this right first of all I've got a minus sign in front so every sign is going to change okay so 104.6 TF becomes minus 144.6 TF minus 22 times 104.6 becomes plus 2301.2 we've got plus 75 TF becomes minus 75 TF and then we have 75 times minus 22 becomes plus 1650 so make sure you see how I've expanded that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather all my TFs on one side and I'm going to gather all my numbers on the other side so the TF side becomes let's bring all the TFs to the left hand side 209.2 plus 104.6 plus 75 gives me 388.8 TF and then as far as the numbers go let's gather those on the right so 2301.2 plus 1650 plus 18828 is 22799.2 put all that together and TF the final temperature 58.6 okay that's as complex as our macroscopic consideration is going to be you've got a system a definitive system that's all on its own and then you've got just the surroundings are two components the water and then whatever the water is contained in and that's going to be something we come back to several times as we start applying this to measuring the heat of a reaction